three against Florida. She put up 24 against LSU. They'll have their hands full tonight. We expect this to be a physical game between these two SEC foes. And Ole Miss controls the tip. We're going to see two different styles. Now, Tennessee is going to try to keep Ole Miss in front of them. More of a gap-type defense on the other side. Ole Miss is going to be in passing lanes trying to get deflections. Snuda Collins will step into the three. Ole Miss is not a team that takes or hits a lot of threes. Marquisha Mark Davis went over Jasmine Powell. She got up over, so it wasn't an over the back, but she was able to get the reach to get the offensive glass. Seven seconds on the shot clock. Here goes Davis. Canard to call three seconds. Well, here's the starting five for Tennessee. Since Destiny Wells went down with that injury, the point guard duties have solely been put on Jasmine Powell's shoulders. And Tennessee with the turnover. Well, Jasmine Powell has been playing well as of late. Well, Mrs. lineup has flipped around. They've used nine different starting lineups. They use a point by point guard by committee approach after KK Deans went down. But we're seeing Kennedy Todd Williams the last couple of games. This is a member of the SEC all second team last season, all defensive team talking about Madison Scott. And first points coming from Rakia Jackson, no surprise. Kennedy Todd Williams with the response. You know, the first game, but they, they won't call her running the point. They right. say it's point guard by, by committee. committee. But right. the first game that she was initiating the offense last week against Georgia, she had a career high. I think that when you put the ball in a player's hands, they understand really how tough that job is. She has a respect for it. But then the accountability piece, even when you don't have the ball. Marquisha Davis, one of Ole Miss's strengths, scoring in transition. Off their defense, you get it and run. Coach Joe kept saying at practice, we cannot run if we don't have the ball. So you get it with your defense and you get it not coming through the net. It's got to be coming off the rim. Jewel Spear getting her own rebound and the putback. Todd Williams directing traffic, starting her career at North Carolina before transferring to Ole Miss. Into the corner, Collins is short. Snuggle will count as a pass over to Marquisha Davis. But you see Marquisha Davis snuck in for the offensive glass. Oh, and that's big Jewel Spear with the answer. If you run, you will be rewarded. Up off the window goes Madison Scott. The Powell's going to push pace for the Lady Balls. Well, oh, Jewel Spear was wide open on the wing, trying to drive in. The shot won't go. And this will stay with Tennessee. Tennessee Lady Balls come in. They have won eight of their last nine games, including Kelly Harper picking up her 100th win at her alma mater on Sunday against Vanderbilt, one of their rivals. And it was a wee back pack game. It couldn't have come at a better time just really accomplishing everything at once. And she talked about how proud Pat Summit would have been. Yeah, she played for Pat Summit, obviously won three national championships as a player at Tennessee. Now in her fifth year leading her alma mater. And again, transition working for Ole Miss, and it's Marquisha Davis. I think Marquisha Davis has a future in the league, in the WNBA at the next level because of how hard she plays. Rekia Jackson in all kinds of traffic with the finish. Was I speaking WNBA? Rekia oh. Jackson has a future in the WNBA. Should she decide to come out? You better believe it. And now Tennessee. You score off missed shots. Jewel Spear. Boom. Her second three of the afternoon. Well, we don't have to worry about Tennessee getting off to a slow start. Nope. They've gotten off to a hot one. Yeah, they trailed by double digits in the second quarter in their first five SEC. For Ole Miss, what Coach Joe tell us? Look, we can go two for twos, but we cannot afford to give up threes. Ole Miss is going to have to be do a better job of finding the shooters, especially in transition. Eight seconds. They swing it over to the other side of the floor with Joel Spear. Running out of time. Three. Got to put it up. Puck it does just in time. To know that Pat would have been proud of this group. You win against Vanderbilt, who's an in-state recognition to Alzheimer's, which was something that Pat Summit really wanted to stay in the fight as long as she possibly could to bring awareness 
and to raise money for research to hopefully find a cure. And the Path Summit Foundation working specifically now to, to help the caregivers. They're coming out to help the caregivers have a strategy for how to take care of loved ones. And how appropriate that is because that, that is who Pat Summit was. She was one that would take care of other people. At times we were like, Pat, I don't know how you get it done. You coach your team. You take care of the players. You have fans and family that call on you to do different things that she made time for everyone. Well, Tennessee's hit its last three shots. Ole Miss trying to catch back up down here early in the first quarter. You see Tennessee, unlike Ole Miss, really sagging back. The focus is to keep Ole Miss out of the paint. And Tennessee with another chance inside the Holling Shed, but it's broken up by Zakaya Stevenson. And still Collins driving. You've got to not allow them to score as many points as you. But when it comes to championship, the foundation on is you got to get on the glass. And the Tennessee 13th of the nation. Well, Ole Miss is pressuring out on the perimeter. So that leaves in isolation, especially if you can get the ball in the middle of the floor. Rakia Jackson. Richardson. Getting the rebound back up. Second shot in the period. Tennessee's going to hustle. Tess Darby loves the three. Four three-pointers made for Tennessee. And that practice yesterday, Coach O spent an hour and a half on transition defense. She's not going to be happy about that. Richardson working on hauling shed. Off and around. And Richardson's using her physicality with hauling shed attacking the basket. Now can she give it back? And they have been challenging Jillian Holling. Ten seconds left in the quarter. Marquisha Davis coming off the screen. Two looks for Ole Miss and they can't finish. And the clock stops with point eight. Marquisha Davis. Point eight. You can catch and shoot. But no time. People didn't like what she said, but she told the truth. When you look at winning and what they did last season yeah we should they should look at packing this place remember gino ariema called out the connecticut fans when he felt like the fans had gotten a little too complacent because they were winning all the time like you have to address that because the fans are a big part in helping your program win and with what coach joe's bringing here the fans like that's what attracts players to want to come play for you with knowing that these there's going to be butts in the seat yeah how many times too do we see nick saban in his career call out their fans for whatever it was leaving early when they're having blowout wins but you know definitely a nice crowd in here today oh uh, there's support in coach o and i see her when she comes in they people are hugging they're blowing kisses to her across the floor there's a lot of love here in oxford mississippi Marquisha Davis with the bucket. She's off to a hot start. Tennessee, though, had a season high in the first quarter, 27 points. So no slow start on the road for the Lady Vols. Well, Tennessee was able to go inside, and then they were knocking down their perimeter shots because of the pressure. Now Ole Miss has got to adjust a little bit so that they can get some rotations, force some dribbles. There, but when a team makes Ole Miss play in the half court, where are they going to get their buckets? Singleton. Now Singleton's got to get on the glass. That's what she can bring and contribute to Ole Miss. If she is physical inside and plays cleanup, that's ex that's exceptionally helpful for the Ole Miss offense. Kennedy Scott Williams is a shooter, so you move her off the off the top. That's a two. Rolls in and out, and Jasmine Powell, one of the smallest players on the floor, gets the rebound. Powell hadn't really gotten going offensively, but she's serving it up. Rita Igbakwe with the block on her birthday. <laughs> it's her birthday. <laughs> Running the floor in transition. Tamari Keith stood up and exposed the ball. And Buckway just knocking that out of bounds. Well, he's going to sub out.
Dual spear. Uh oh. And Ibakwe with the board. Scott at the free throw line. I think that the 3x3 three three experience over the summer, moving to the point guard since she's been at Ole Miss this season has been key for her taking her game up. Maddie Scott with the steal and it's poked away. Lost control of it. Last touch by Ole Miss. Going to Stark Vegas. Jessica Carter's playing well for the Mississippi State Bulldogs along with Lauren Park Lane at the point. Ole Miss is going to run some weave action and then look for the post to step up. Set a ball screen for the opportunity to attack. Apparently Stripling whistled for the foul on that last play for Tennessee. Stripling. She's so strong. Down low. Number 11 in orange. Getting that early position. Oh, Ole Miss got it back, but then Kennedy Todd Williams lost it. You can't afford to turn the ball over against Ole Miss. Ole Miss will turn those into buckets with a quickness. Kaya Wynn with the bounce. She's really come along. Kaya Wynn has, especially in the absence of Destiny Wells going down in that guard position. Ilana Eaton off the mark. Now Stripling not posting up against Richardson. Oh, nice give and go. Oh, Jackson missed the turnaround. Richardson pulls up in transition. Stripling was begging for the basketball down low. Rakia Jackson off the backboard. Jackson in the double figures now. Inside to Caroline Striplin. Oh, that's a lot of contact right there. And I knew it was going to be a physical game. And from Wake Forest, we like, talked about coaching staff has about how good she is in the three-point shooter. She's really good at that. No, absolutely she is. One of their best three-point shooters in Tennessee now. Changed up to a 2-3 zone. Yeah, Tennessee has gone cold from the three-point line. Haven't hit one since the first quarter. I mean, look at the size of Tennessee all across the board. Madison Scott is going to go over. We're tied at 37. Powell shot off the mark. Todd Williams going to the free throw. Todd Williams gets the third, and that is always a fun rivalry. Oh, it Just is. a little bus trip by the Waco. The, the, the fans will be out. Baylor, they've dropped three of their last four ball games. They've got to get back on track. Rakia Jackson, seven seconds. Madison Scott, short on the layup. And a jump ball possession. Beer is going to take it out for Tennessee. Rakia Jackson's got it. Heaves it at half court. Shoo, had a chance. Again, such an important game when it comes to the NCAA tournament. Ole Miss is an eight seed. They're in the field right now. Tennessee wants to make sure they're in the field. They have never missed an NCAA tournament. Charlie Cream says a win today and a Miami loss would put Tennessee firmly in the field, but Miami just beat Duke.
that makes this game even more important for Tennessee. If they could pull off a win on the road against Ole Miss, that would help their cause. Marquisha Davis will take the three to start things out for the Rebels, and this is going to be Tennessee basketball. Tennessee either had threes or the ball was scored in the paint. Only one bucket was scored that was in that mid-range area. Quite the opposite for Ole Miss. Oh, little drop up for Kennedy Todd Williams in transition. Sometimes it's just your night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the answer, though, Jules Spear. Oh, Tennessee gets beat back in transition. You can't celebrate after you score a bucket. This will stay with Tennessee. Kennedy Todd Williams. the floor. Wow, the ball hung on the rim for a while. Caroline Stripling off the front of the iron. This will be Ole Miss basketball. And I think that this game is going to be decided by which team handles the physicality the best. All right, Marquisha Davis. So Davis delivers physicality on that possession. How aggressive will Tennessee be in attacking on this one? 14 points for Davis. Tennessee goes inside to Rakia. Oh, short on the layup. Rebound by Singleton. And you can't beg for fouls in this game. You got to go earn it. Largest lead for Ole oh. Miss here. Tennessee wanted the charge, but instead it's going to be a foul. Wow, I'm not sure about that one. I was thinking and watching Stripling get set. Keep in mind, in women's basketball, the arc on the floor does not matter. That is not in play for women's basketball. So she tacks on one more for a three-point play. Oh, Ole Miss has brought up the heat. Coming with the trap. Tennessee gets out of it. Jasmine Powell goes to coast. Marquisha Davis away from the screen from Scott. And out comes Rakia. This is where she is so dangerous. It's a hard matchup where Rakia Davis can rebound the basketball, bring it down the floor. Spears setting things up. Sees an opening and takes it going to the free throw line. Well, she's garnered the respect in the scouting report that she is a three-point shooter. So defensively, you've got to play her a little tighter. That's smart of Spear now when the defense is out, the lane is open, go attack. Spent three seasons at Wake Forest and wanted to look for a new place to develop her game even more. Hoping for a chance to play on the next level. Baseline shot for Marquisha Davis is a no. Ooh. Oh, you got to make those layups. Kennedy Todd Williams tucked it like a running back and took it all the way in. <laughs> it's almost like she sliced her... Uh, an area to go with that left hand and finish with the right. Takeaway, two on one, behind the back to Maddie Scott for Marquisha Davis. Put it on the highlight reel. Marquisha Davis is coming off 23 against Florida, 24 against Ole Miss. Watch out. Hey, got to find a way Tennessee is to have a slow Davis down. Courtney Lyle and Carolyn Peck with you from Oxford. This has been such a fun one to watch. It was tied up at 39 all at the half. They're looking inside for Rakia Jackson. Somehow she cut that ball in between a double. She just has a natural instinct of what to do with the ball. Joel Spear drops it in and one. Second foul was whistled against Ibakwe. Joel Spear back at the free throw line looking for the three-point play. Got it. 
Ole Miss lead cut to one. Tennessee's led by as many as seven today. Having Tamari King inside to try to slow things down in the paint, but not slowing down. Nakia Jackson trying to do that. She's blocked by Madison Scott into the hands of Marquisha Davis. You know, I asked her what was it about her game? What motivated about her to motivated her to play? She said, I'm a baller. Yeah. <laughs> Look, when you got the confidence about your game, you're a baller. When you step on the court, you think that way. When you get an opportunity with the basketball, you're thinking, I ain't doing nothing but scoring. I'm getting buckets, and that's what Marquisha Davis, she does. This is a clear out one-on-one. -on -one. I like that decision, though, from Madison Scott. You're pulling Tamari Key away from the basket. Snoda Collins, the kick out too much. You talk about Tamari Keith, only made nine appearances last season. And she told us yesterday, I've had to work myself back into game shape, too. Yeah, I don't care how much time you spend on a treadmill or in the pool. you got to play to get in game shape. Six seconds. Jewel Spear, a little fade away at the baseline. Jewel Spear. She averaging 14 or 12, almost 12 points a game. She's got 20. If you're Coach Joe, in all the different options of what teams are going to do, because most teams, they give in to it, and they just say, okay, let me just get the ball in and then to the top and run an offense. Holly's able to pass out of the double team to Kaya Wynn. Now, that was a great cut. Smart play by Wynn when the double team came. Todd Williams baseline, no. Ibakwe rebound to the free throw line. Started her career at Pitt in her second season now with Ole Miss. Number four, Houston facing Texas. Now, Holly Shed now bought, battling for position. They were really having a field day by going high-low in the first half, Tennessee, of having Rakia Jackson post down low. Look at Jewel Spear work, and she's got a new season high, 22 points. <laughs> this is a SEC season has hit. Every game matters. Julius talked about her brothers pushing her into the sport of basketball. Her older brother, she wanted to be just. You got bragging rights. That's right. <laughs> you got sit. She's covered up. Kennedy Todd Williams picks it. Running Rebels. You can execute. You've got her. You have Tess Darby, number 21 in orange on the floor. Be a three-point option. Spear getting trapped. Oh, uh, the trap's a good idea. Oh, uh, miss. Scott swiped it. Marquisha Davis missed at the buzzer. With defense coming at you, you also have to be thinking where everybody needs to be. And she talked about communication. You, you have to have the right way to communicate. Not that you talk, but what you're saying and how you can to shoot the three. Instead, Collins is going to drive by Tess Derby. And again, Ole Miss does not shoot the three a lot, nor do they shoot it well. So that's a risk you're willing to take. Tess Derby does both of those things very well. Her second three and Tennessee within one. Richardson seeing an opening in the SEC tournament and with LSU's loss on Thursday to South Carolina. Help their net rankings as well. So not only conference. Five seconds. Rakia Jackson. All right, one and done. Oh Miss not allowing Key to get on the offensive glass. And the Rebels go quickly to Madison Scott and one.
That's the third on Keith. Madison Scott continuing to run in transition and not afraid to attack. Caroline Strickland will check in to replace Tamari Key, who has three fouls. And a lane violation. Oh, that will drive. As a coach, that drives me crazy. Yeah. That's just a matter Is of that discipline. Thing? That's just one of yep. many. <laughs> But it's just discipline. You gotta be patient. You gotta be disciplined in these situations because you give Ole Miss an opportunity. Bucket, baseline. Caroline Stripling got a terrific position down low, just wasn't able to finish. Richardson up to 18. She is having herself a day. That's a new season high, and Ole Miss has its largest lead. Spirit, 25 points. Singleton with the putback. Tennessee led by as many as seven in the first quarter. We were tied at 39 at the half. Put Sarah Puckett at the free throw line. Game between these Tennessee Lady Volunteers and the Lady Bulldogs of Georgia. Coverage begins. Now Tennessee going back to a man-to-man -man defense. Richardson for three. She had hit four on the season coming into today, and today she's two for two. Hey, when it's your day, it's your day. And Tennessee needed that from Jasmine. Kennedy, Todd Williams, no. Spear with a little hezzy. It's going to be a chess match. It's like Tennessee has really five guards on the floor to match the five guards or the hybrid players of Ole Miss. Davis for two. Switch. A new season high. Her career high, by the way, is 40. Got a ways to go. Yeah. There's Bill working down Heat Hill. High up off the window and no whistle there. Tennessee's bench wanted a foul call. They have let them play today. Ooh, Marquisha Davis the other end. Jewel Spear and Tess Darby that can be wide. Three-point threats to open up the lane. And then you've got a driver in Jasmine Powell. Puckett gets it across half court. She'll give it back up to Powell to set things up. Spear comes to get it five seconds, and she's fouled by Collins. That's the fifth team foul. It puts Jules Spear at the free throw line. First one short. Let's see six for nine for the charity strike today. One of two. Now, to a two-point game. Ole Miss doesn't have to be in a hurry. They just want to make sure that they get a good shot. They can use as much of the clock as possible, but then they want to get something going to the basket. So they get two or either find themselves getting to the free throw line. Tennessee back work in the zone. And there's a foul on Rakia Jackson. So now Tennessee still has another foul to give. So they need to look at attacking the basket. No foul call. The officials have let him play today. Now 
Tennessee, they've got a foul. You've got to get a steal. You can't just let the time run off the clock. I think Kelly Harper's trying to get Jewel Spear to foul, but she wasn't understanding. And Kennedy Ty Williams is going to score. I expect Coach Joe, if they did score, it would, be, would call time out and advance it. But if not, the balls have to, the Lady Balls have to foul. Powell trying to drive, and she's blocked by Kennedy Ty Williams. It stays with Tennessee. 21.1 on the clock. Stolen away by Todd Williams. Tennessee's got a foul. They got to find her. Tennessee has to foul right now. 12.9. Ole Miss does have a timeout if they can't get the ball in. They get it into Todd Williams. And Jewel Spear. Too much time. They're going to let it go. First time since 2017.